morning. So the question that keeps coming up a lot since I talked about it in the last video is, when should you dethatch your Bermuda lawn? If you wanna watch the shortest video in the world, the answer is, is never. But I'm gonna explain why in just a second. So uh, before I start this video, a couple of you guys have asked about this new product we're developing with Andersons that we're doing testing on now. We'll be doing testing on for several months, but there may be a chance for you guys to actually get your hands on a small run of it because it's fun to play with. Um, I'll put up a picture of this area when there's no dew on it and you'll be able to see how dark and green this is. Now that's on Barb's lawn. Um, we've got about 10 little testing spots that we've done and then we're going to start to do some stripes with a little bit now that they're able to produce a little bit more of this stuff but it's a really cool product. It's a granular product that acts as fast as a liquid. It's just really cool. I'll, I'll be talking about it more probably next week once we lock down everything on it. Uh, I have never dethatched this lawn, period. And you should not dethatch a lawn that grows via a system of runners. Hold on. If I talk about any products, I'll put a link in the description below. You can go there, of course, quick, click the subscribe button. But this is also covered in the Bermuda Lawn Guide. Um, in the description below, there is, uh, on that page, there's a link to the Bermuda Lawn Guide, and it covers everything all the way through the year. You can also, uh, if you're watching this on your TV, scan this QR code, and it'll take you right over the Bermuda Lawn Guide. So that's kind of a cool way to do it. Uh, I have a bunch of videos, told my wife I need to start making a list of what I can and can't do because I've got like 20, 25 videos we're getting ready to put out. But as an example, something that came up where I was replacing sprinkler heads back here and in the comments you guys were talking about the Hunter I-20 heads. So I went and did a little research on them and they really are nice grade, they're nice heads. So what I decided to do is I decided to go all the way to the top and put some bling. <laughs> put some bling in my yard and I got the Hunter I-20s for the front but I got the stainless steel models. Look at that. Isn't that sweet? <laughs> so I'll be installing those maybe this week and I'll put that on video for you guys. But let's talk about dethatch. Some people are going to say I dethatch my Bermuda all the time and it's and it works out great. If you're dethatching Bermuda and it works out great, number one, I guarantee you you're not cutting your Bermuda really short, i.e. half inch or three quarters of an inch. You're one of those people that let your Bermuda get too long, two and a half, three, four inches, and so you're having to dethatch. Number two, if you're having to dethatch, you're not cutting your Bermuda often enough. What does that mean? It means that you're getting heavy clippings. You should always return your clippings if they're not creating piles on your lawn. That's rule number one. Rule number two, if you start to see uh, clipping piles, pick them up. <laughs> Put a bagger on your unit and pick them up. Heavy clipping piles will just cause rot and cause problems. Normal light clippings, I don't have any thatch buildup in my lawn. And you know how much I cut my lawn. I've got no thatch buildup whatsoever. Since we scout Bermuda every year, I mean, we, I, mean I scout mine pretty much close to dirt. Since we scalp it all the time, thatch just isn't a problem. The other thing that happens is, is the thatch layer naturally breaks down. And one of the things I've noticed this year is if you have a thatch problem, is get some of the dirt booster. Put out dirt booster at late in, the, late in the afternoon or early evening, hit it with the microbial spray in the evening, early evening, and then water it, water it, water it, and let it sit all night long. And what will happen is that good microbes and the good fungus, that microbial fungus, the mycorrhizal fungi, will help break down that thatch naturally. That's all you want. Is you just want lots of bugs in there, microscopic bugs in there, eating that thatch layer in that breakdown process. This, now I did the reseeding project. We just put that on video. So we reseeded the fairway, we reseeded the green, we're doing it in Bermuda. And I showed you the electric scarifier. It's a dethatcher slash scarifier that you can get for like 130 bucks. That's why I didn't even bother renting one because I can just, 
I may only use that thing once a year, but for 130 bucks, if I got a place to store it, that's the problem. Um, why not? But it comes with a D thatcher. Um, the D thatcher is this little spring loaded thing here. That's the D thatcher. The scarifier is actually the blades, which are kind of offset and that tears it up. Neither one of those, are we going to have a Jack Russell go poo? Neither one of those should be used on a lawn that grows through a system of rhizomes and stolons runners we'll call them let's make it easy so any grass system that runs that that grows through a system of runners you never want to dethatch you never want to scarify because you will damage that runner system you'll thin it out matter of fact let me put up um there were two comments on this um i don't know if i can actually read them i took a snapshot of them on my phone i'll put them up on the screen but steven Pereira said, Doc, what happens if we already dethatched our Bermuda lawn? Now, a couple of months later, I have maybe 30% coverage of grass left. I thought my watering very high temps around 115, blah, 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 my lawn. I'm really kicking myself for dethatching. Do I need to reseed? No, uh, Stephen, you actually just need to push your lawn the way you have it. Just keep putting water down and keep putting fertilizer down. And if nothing else, wait for the temperatures to cool a little bit, and then you can push it. The other comment, Walt Van Court, thanks for putting this comment. Um, a certain company, I'll just block off the name, sells and recommends scarifying and dethatching. I tried the blah blah, the groundskeeper rake stop when I saw how it was pulling up the runners, but my grass was wet. Well, that's because you're doing it on a grass that has rhizomes and stolons or runners so st augustine bermuda any grass that runs through a system of runners you never want to do it on so here's here's what you need to understand i always return my clippings because we are now we're using real mowers and we're only taking you know a tiny tiny bit and there's no buildup whatsoever when my son was out here cutting while i was away on vacation he was putting off his cutting i'm out here cutting a lot he was putting it off and he was having to come out here with a blower. And when I saw that, I knew I was gonna have trouble when I got home. And when I got home, I could see inside this lawn a bunch of extra clippings. No big deal. We came out here, we uh, did a real hard cut. We sucked it up with the John Deere. And then we put down Dirt Booster in the microbial pack. And I'm telling you, I can almost see dirt sometimes if I dig down through. Clippings and thatch is good. It protects the lawn, it holds moisture, it protects microbial activity, it protects the good fungus in your lawn. So having thatch is good. The problem comes from really cutting habits is where you'll develop some problems. Again, not cutting often enough, cutting way too much. Instead of cutting just a third of it off or a quarter of it off, you're cutting half the grass off and you're getting a whole bunch of clippings built. So what can I do in the summertime? That's a good question. My lawn's a little bit thick, it's a little bit nasty. One of the key things you can do in the summertime is do a core aeration. Can't tell you how much that helps. You get, uh, yesterday we had some real heavy thunderstorms. So we probably got probably about two inches of rain in a matter of 45 minutes. They came through in batches. Um, if you have a clay soil like I have, I just did a video, and you need to watch this video on water infiltration and how deep water penetrates over certain it's kind of a technical video but it's a real good video to understand that if you'll do a core aeration those aeration pockets will fill up with water and actually allow more water to be held and penetrate your soil also it allows oxygen your soil needs oxygen for nutrient uptake but if it's a good way also to decompact your soil, core aeration is a really good thing to do. After you do your core aeration, throw down some humichar. Uh, if you want to throw down some dirt booster, you can do that too. But core aeration is a great thing to do in the summertime. So for those of you that um, follow our channel, you understand what we're doing over here with the reseeding project on the fairway and on the putting green last night we had thunderstorms and this is a great example now we used the scarifier blades to dig that seed in a little bit deeper so we put it some of it at half an inch some of it at an eighth and some on the top good example this is a washout area man this got hit pretty hard 
it's always good to have a little extra seed on something like this and if you do have a washout i'll probably throw some down and rake some more but because i have some deep i'm not that worried about it the green actually looks great the water bottle um it's on a it's on a big hump and that's why we put the green up here and it should come in nicely let me throw up a picture by the way a lot of people you're asking about the zoysia down at the beach house the backyard was done differently let me put up a picture of it it really looks nice right now the front yard um an interesting note interesting note on the front yard is that we had this really black dark sandy soil topsoil brought in i mean it was thick <laughs> and uh i hadn't done this is one of the risks you take when you bring in some kind of topsoil so i sent off a soil test of that soil down to clemson and i'm a little concerned because the ph on that was 4.9 <laughs> and i knew that ph i knew it was going to be acidic simply because from the smell of it. it had kind of a manure kind of smell to it and it was actually low in phosphorus and the rest of the lawn down there is high in phosphorus. So um, I'm real fortunate. The lawn down there is coming in. Um, we'll see, we'll be back down there in a few weeks and we'll take a look at it. But um, I'm fortunate that I've got a guy down there that's kind of helping me out. I can pick up a phone and he's actually putting out some lime for me and also putting down some of the PGF balance, which is a fast release 10, 10, 10 to get that phosphorus up a little bit. So I'm fortunate that he can go by and he can do a few things for me, but I sent down, sent him, I actually went on Amazon and I ordered some PGF balance and I actually had it shipped to him down there and he actually put out the first treatment of balance. He's already got a treatment of lime out. We'll be redoing that again. So we'll watch that. I think it'll come in okay. I may, when we go down in a couple of weeks, I may have to get the scarifier out and do another seeding of that zoysia. But the back actually came up really well. The front looking kind of patchy, but still I'm seeing a lot of it move in because we mixed a perennial rye along with the zoysia just in case something like this were to happen so we'll see how that project turns out so i have kind of a surprise for you guys my daughter and son-in-law in this real estate market were actually able to find a house and buy a house last month <laughs> that was shocking oh it's a crazy market so they were able to buy a house it's um a little bit older house the lawn i believe is bermuda in the front crappy in the back it does have irrigation so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna grab some cameras. Ryan and I are gonna go over there and I'm going to, we're going to analyze a week lawn and we're gonna go through the remedies to fix that and bring that back to life. And then in about eight weeks, we'll do all the applications and then we'll show you the transition of that, of what it looks like. That's my plan. So that should be kind of cool. So hit subscribe. There's a red button somewhere around here. And you don't wanna miss this face. <laughs> Uh, hit subscribe and uh, got a bunch of stuff coming out. Talk to you later. Die. See that right there? Yeah. That's a zucchini. Well, mommy pick up a cucumber. Cucumbers? Yes. At, at Ernie's house. At Ernie's house. Well, yeah. that's good. Well, come in here and let's go get a tomato. Go in the middle. Hey, Linda. What are you doing? Hey, Linda. What are you doing? She's trying to watch us. She's watching us? Mm -hmm. <laughs>